Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have the sum of the reciprocals of odd numbers and they are alternating. 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth minus blah blah blah. So on and so forth. So let's go ahead and evaluate the sum. I'm also going to show you a graph, a really nice graph at the end. So in order to evaluate the sum, I'm going to use definite integrals. So they're definitely going to help us find the answer. Let's go ahead and start with the following integral. And as you know, when you have a definite integral, you're going to evaluate the integral, whatever method you use, and then you're going to plug in the boundary values. Okay? So the first integral that I'm going to consider is 0 to 1 dx. This could also be written as 1 dx, so we're basically integrating 1. And that is going to be, I could probably write it that way, just more clearly. And the integral of 1 is just x, right? Think about it. The derivative of each function is 1, the answer is x. Now you have to plug in the lower and the upper numbers. That's going to give you 1 minus 0, which is 1. Great. We got the first term, yay, let's go ahead and get the second term. And you can kind of think about it, like, how could I get one-third from an integral? And we're always going to be from 0 to 1. And of course, I need to integrate x squared, because the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. And from 0 to 1, it's just going to be 1 over 3 minus 0. Again, that will be 1 over 3. So let's continue doing this a little bit, and so you get the pattern and hopefully we can um, write it down. So now I'm going to, next one uh, that I'm going to integrate is x to the fourth dx. So, so far, hopefully you got the pattern. I'm only interested in the integral of even powers of x because I want to get an odd power and I obviously want to get an odd number at the bottom because I'm concerned with the reciprocals of odd numbers. Make sense? That's why I'm only considering this, uh, the even powers. So the integral of x to the 4th is x to the 5th divided by 5 from 0 to 1. This is just going to be 1 fifth. So in general, if you are integrating x to the power n dx, 0 to 1, that is going to be x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 from 0 to 1, and that is just going to be 1 over n plus 1. So this is the motivation behind n being an even number, so that we can get an odd number here. Okay? And if you continue this pattern, let's do one more time. 0 to 1, x to the power 6 dx. That's going to give you x to the 7th divided by 7. From 0 to 1, this is just going to be 1 7. Good, great, awesome. But I need an alternating series, not just the sum. So if I go ahead and add these up, 0 to 1, 1 dx, plus 0 to 1, x squared dx, plus 0 to 1, x to the 4th dx, so on and so forth. This is just going to give me 1 plus 1 third plus 1 fifth. And one of the questions that I want to pose in this video is, is this sum going to converge? Something to think about. Please let me know what you think. So here's what we're going to do, though. We don't want the sum. We want an alternating sum. That's why we want a plus sign and a minus sign and a plus sign and a minus sign. So here's what we're going to do it. We're going to write this sum as, basically, let me start with the sum. So you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to write it as, so I'm going to replace the 0 with 0 to 1 dx, or 1 dx. And then 1 third I'm going to replace with 0 to 1 x squared dx. And then 1 fifth is going to be replaced with x to the fourth dx, 0 to 1. And finally, 1 seventh last but not least, is going to be x to the 60x. And of course, there are more and more and more terms, right? Obviously. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit um, to the left so we don't get cut off. So let's go ahead and move it a little bit this way. Okay, here we go. So now, since I'm trying to evaluate the sum on the left-hand side, I just need to evaluate these integrals. But how do you do that? Well, we can kind of put it in a more compact form by putting these together. So if you have the integral of, uh oh, 
if you have the integral of, let's say, f of x dx and then g of x dx, and suppose this is uh, from a to b, the same boundaries, and this is plus minus sign, you can definitely put these two integrals together. As long as they have the same upper and lower bounds, you can go ahead and put it together, kind of like you combine those functions together. And in some cases, it's better to separate them, and in some cases, it's better to, you know, put it together. That's what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and put these all together. So we can kind of write this as 0 to 1, 1 dx minus x squared dx. And instead of writing the dx every time, I can go ahead and do the following. 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th power minus x to the 6th power plus dot dot dot, so on and so forth. And then put a single dx. Because it, it'll be distributed and basically... Well, it's not a multiplication, but it's kind of like a multiplication with the abuse of notation. Okay, now, how on earth is this helpful, right? I know some people are going to pose this question. And the answer to that is we can kind of consider this as a geometric series. This is actually an infinite geometric series. Let me remind you what the formula looks like. So we have 1 plus r plus r squared plus r to the third power dot dot dot. This is uh, converging to 1 over 1 minus r as long as r is between 0 and 1. Did I say 0 and 1? Yes, that's exactly what we have. From 0 to 1, we're considering an infinite geometric series. But it is kind of different because r is negative x squared. Makes sense? We have 1 plus negative x squared and then negative x squared squared and then negative x squared cubed, which basically gives us the negative terms when the power is, did I write the 2 twice? Great. Okay. It's supposed to go like 2, 3, 4. Yeah. So basically we're getting a negative term here. Um, we're getting, we're going to be getting a negative term. Okay. I forgot to write the first power. That's why I'm kind of messed up. Okay. I was supposed to write X, negative x squared to the first power, second power, third power. Okay, great. So this is supposed to be a negative and this is supposed to be a negative and they're just going to alternate. So by the formula, this is supposed to equal 1 over 1 minus r, 1 minus negative x squared. Awesome. So our sum, to keep a long story short, I know it's been a long story, so I'm going to try to finish up. So this sum is equivalent to the integral, the integral, don't forget because we are integrating everything here, right? So this integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx from 0 to 1. Because this stuff is supposed to be integrated, right? From 0 to 1. Awesome. But that integral should be familiar to you. Come on. Isn't this the arc tangent or tan inverse? You know, people write it, things in different ways. But the integral of this is just arc tangent x from 0 to 1 or if you want you can write it as tan inverse x this is what how they do it in the United States and now you're going to plug it in tan inverse of 1 minus tan inverse of 0 so you're thinking the tangent of which angle is 1 you have to look for the smallest angle which is positive it's going to be pi over 4 and this is going to be 0 so this beautiful awesome gigantic sum is converging to pi over 4. So that's going to be the answer basically for our problem. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. That's the answer. And the graph is going to show you what? The integral of, not the integral, the area. Here you go. The area under the curve is going to give you the value, which is pi over 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.